Hi everybody. In this video we are going to compare linear translation systems to rotating systems. So we are going to discuss angular velocity and torque. Let's start with um, a point A. A point A that moves around a circle over here and it travels with a constant velocity in 4 seconds. Well, then we can say that the travel distance is the circumference of this circle, which equals 2 times p times r meters. So the velocity in point A is equal to the distance 2 times p times r divided by the travel time of 4 seconds, which equals 0.5 times p times r meters per second. We can also say that the traveled angle is equal to 2 times p radians. The travel time was 4 seconds, so the angular velocity omega is 2 times p divided by 4 is 0.5 times p radians per second. So now we can say that v, which equals in this example 0.5 times p times r meters per second, is equal to this value, which equals omega times r. So v is equal to omega times r. Angular velocity are always applied to rotating objects. We also use the term speed in rotating objects, and speed is in RPM. We can uh, calculate speed out of angular velocity, because when we um, divide the angular velocity by 2p, we get the number of rotations per second. When we multiply that by 60, we get the number of rotations per minute. When we have the, when we have the speed and rotations per minute, we can also calculate the angular velocity by dividing n by 60. Then we have the number of rotations per second again and multiply it by 2p and then we have the radians per second, so omega. Now let's discuss torque. Suppose we have a rod over here and a force which is acting on that rod, a force F. Then um, that, that force F causes the rod to rotate around the origin here. And we define the torque as the force times the arm. So the T, the, the torque, is equal to the force F times the arm R. And the unit of torque is Newton meter. So torque is always applied to rotating objects, and torque is a so-called rotational force. So let's discuss this example, and in this example we have a motor which drives a lifting drum. And connected to that lifting drum we have a load over here. And the force acting on that load is m times g, and g is a gravitational acceleration. So we have a load force over here and a load speed over here, and that load force is, is a load torque over here, and the load speed is transformed to an angular velocity over here. So when we have that, we can say that when we uh, want to move that load, we can say that the motor force over here is equal to the load force plus the acceleration force. So F motor equals m times g plus m times a, and a is the derivative of the speed, so dv dt. When we multiply all parts of the equation, so left and right of the equation by r, we get F motor times r is equal to F load times r plus F acceleration times r. So F motor times r is equal to m times g times r plus m times r times dv dt. We can write this part also in another, um, uh, in another way, so we can say it's m times r squared multiplied with the derivative of v over r, and v over r was the angular velocity, so we get m times r squared uh, multiplied with the derivative of the angular velocity. So now we can say f times r is the torque, so the motor torque is equal to the load torque plus the acceleration torque. And the acceleration torque is the derivative of the angular speed times m times r squared. And m times r squared, we call that the moment of inertia related to the axis. And 
the the parameter in which we describe the moment of inertia is the j and the unit of the moment of inertia is kilogram meter squared so now let's uh, compare a linear motion system system with a rotating motion system in linear motion systems we talk about force f in newtons in rotating motion systems we talk about torque torque t in newton meter in linear motion systems we talk about speed v in meters per second in rotating motion speed motion systems we talk about angular velocity omegas in radians per second and the power in a linear motion system p equals the force times the speed f times v and the unit of power is what in a rotating system power equals t times omega again the unit is what but the power is defined as the torque multiplied with the angular velocity we can derive that from this equation because the force equals the torque divided by r remember the torque was f times r so the force is equal to the torque divided by r we also know that v equals omega times r so when we substitute these two parts in this equation we get p equals f which is t over r times v which is equal to omega times r so we get p is t times omega which was written over here so comparing a linear motion system to a rotating motion system in a linear system and linear motion we talk about force f in newtons about displacement s in meters speed v in meters per second and acceleration which is the derivative of the speed in meters per second squared we also discuss the parameter m the mass in kilograms and we have the, uh, the equation that power equals force times speed in a rotating motion system force becomes torque in newton meter displacement becomes angular rotation and radians and speed v becomes angular velocity omega and radians per second acceleration becomes angular acceleration alpha the derivative of the angular velocity the uh, omega dt so the derivative of omega and we have the power which is equal to the torque times the velo angular velocity the mass m is in a rotating motion system moment of inertia j in kilograms meter square so that's all about comparing a linear motion system to a rotating motion system thank you for watching